Hi, this is Lucas with Prairie Land John Deere here in Abilene. And in this segment, we'll, we will be talking about planter hookup. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Justin to talk about the quick hitch prep. Hello, I'm Justin. I'm in parts at Abilene. First step is to adjust the sway blocks. The sway blocks are factory installed and can be removed, but for this process, we need to have them installed. You can adjust the sway by lowering and rising the sway blocks. The bumpers can be adjusted forwards and rear rearwards to limit the sway as well. Total sway needs to be about a quarter of an inch. Next, we'll check the bushings to make sure they are correct and lift and lock the planter into position. While doing this, it's all you should always have your operator's manual handy so you can look for hookup procedures for your specific piece of equipment. We suggest that you remove the three point center hook off of your quick hitch. This can prevent damage to the planter and also catching and damaging hoses. We also suggest removing the park stands so they don't get caught and damaged as well. After the planter is connected entirely, you need to make toolbar, the toolbar perpendicular to the ground at planter's depth with the tractor three point hitch height adjustment. The bottom of the toolbar should be approximately 20 to 22 inches from the ground for the best down force performance. Next, Steve will go over the hydraulics with you. I'm Steve Marston with the service department in the Abilene store. On our planter, when we hook it up to the tractor, first thing we want to do is hook up our case drain hose. The case drain hose port is right here on this on this model of tractor. There are other ports right above it that may be not being used or are used for your power beyond at this time. Be sure to connect the case drain hose to the flat faced fitting as shown here. The connections at the back of the tractor can be set up multiple ways depending on the planner, uh, the planner setup and the operator's preference. Number one is generally used for the frame lift, number two for the markers and three and four or others for vacuum or variable rate drive as needed. And then you can also use, if you don't have enough SCVs, you can use the Powered Beyond ports located down here below the SCV hookups, but do not confuse them with the case drain. Oops, sorry, wrong direction. The motor return couplers for your vacuum fan motors have six holes in the end of them. Do not worry, those are bent to be that way. It is so the oil is flowed only one direction and it allows the motors to coast down when the tractor hydraulics are put in the float position when shutting down the motors. The uh, planter hydraulic flow requirements vary from planter to planter. This chart shows us how much oil is required when we raise the planter at the end of the field over here and how that takes away our possible flows for other operations. If you're running a smaller tractor and run a planter with a power generation, you need to be aware that when you have the power generation provided by the hydraulic system, it requires a considerable more amount of flow shown down here in the bottom versus what it takes if it is off of the PTO on the tractor. The SCV settings on our tractors as shown in this chart here show to reflect that when you set this tractor for maximum flow of 10, you are not getting 10 gallon a minute. You're actually getting the full flow of your hydraulic system. 
that varies depending on which hydraulic pump you have on this tractor or your machine. The hydraulics shown here, it says SCV1, planter raised lower hoses should be set to an SCV rating of nine when we're requiring a uh, flow of 25 gallon per minute. If you look over here at nine, that gives us on this tractor setting, yours may be different, it gives us a 28.3 gallon per minute flow. So we've got extra three gallons per minute. That will be beneficial when raising and lowering and anytime your fans kick on and off if you have CCS fans. Now that we've made our hydraulic connections, now it's time to make our electrical connections. First, we need to make sure the engine, engine is shut off and the key is shut off. Then we'll grab our nine pin ISOBUS harness and hook it up to the ISOBUS connector located here in the top right. Then we'll grab our seven pin lighting and power harness and plug it into the seven pin connector located below the ISOBUS connector. This one supplies power to the flashers and it also gives power to the frame controls. So if you have a problem with the markers not working or the frame not folding, it could be that you need to check this connection. If you've upgraded tractors recently, it's important to check which speed source that the tractor is set for, for the right one for your planner. Most of these would come out of the factory with the radar speed source connected. If that's something that needs changed for GPS, all you have to do is pop off the convenience outlet cover located in the lower right corner of your cab there's two connectors in there clearly labeled GPS or radar. It's really easy to make a switch if you need to change that. At the end of planting, or if you need to unhook the planter during the planting season, it's important to follow the correct steps. First, you need to lower the implement onto the stops, then block the tires as needed, lower the stands and unhitch the planter, place the SCV control levers into float, shut off the tractor ignition, and then this is important, allow, allow the controllers at least three minutes to power down properly. Once they've powered down properly, then you can disconnect the hoses and electrical harnesses and put all those back into their storage locations. Now we'd like to just say thank you for joining us and for any additional support, please contact your local Prairie Land Partner location.